Hello, my name is Dennis, and welcome to my Trailer Park White Trash Mobile Home Kitchen. I really do live in a mobile home, in a trailer park, and this is my kitchen. Last week I went to another chef's demonstration. It was the second one that they did, and it was fun. Again, one of the recipes that I liked was this chef demonstrated rolling your own ravioli. In fact, we got to roll some of our own ravioli if we wanted to practice. Ravioli to me is easy, but what I really liked about his recipe was the sauce. It was made with roasted tomatoes. So I did some research on the internet. I found a few recipes. I made the adjustments that I want for what I like. I'm going to roll ravioli today, show you how to make ravioli, but the real thing here that I'm concerned with is the sauce. So let's get into the ingredients I'm going to be using first for making my sauce. I'm going to make enough pasta here for four to six people. So I've got two large eggs, one half teaspoon salt, three quarters of a cup, 128 grams of pasta flour. This is durum wheat semolina, which is a harder textured flour. It'll make a chewier, more al dente pasta. And then I have three quarters of a cup, 100 grams of all purpose flour. You could use all of one, all of the other. I find that a, an equal mix of the two gives me a nicely textured pasta. And then optionally, I'm using a couple of teaspoons of olive oil here. It'll make the pasta dough a little bit smoother, a little bit creamier, a little bit easier to work with. Here's another area where I differ from the traditionalists. They put the flour on the counter and make a well in the middle and then put the eggs in the middle and then start combining. I do it all in a bowl. I think it's a lot easier, less messy. Okay, once I've started to get this to the point where it's pretty much starting to join up and is crumbly, then I can move it to the counter and start kneading. I'm going to start pressing this together and kneading it. I'm doing my pasta in advance because the, the pasta dough has to rest for at least an hour. And you can see that all came together. There's my pasta dough. It is hard, it is dry, but that I can work with. So I'm going to wrap that up, put that in the refrigerator for at least an hour, and then I'll be ready to start shaping my pasta. In the meantime, I'm going to start also making my sauce. For the sauce, I have four pounds, which is what, about 1.8 kilograms of ripe Roma tomatoes. I have four rather large cloves of garlic. The skin is still on, you'll understand that in a moment. About two tablespoons, roughly, of olive oil. This is just regular olive oil for frying. One medium onion that I'll be chopping. I'll be using about one cup of beef broth. I have some anchovy fillets. I'm going to use two of those. Don't panic. They add nice flavor without adding a fishy flavor to a lot of recipes. I've got my nutmeg grater over here. I'm going to be grating some fresh nutmeg into my sauce, maybe an eighth of a teaspoon. I need the leaves from about eight to nine stalks of Italian parsley. That's flat leaf parsley. And then I have six to eight I'll be using six to eight leaves of fresh basil, and then finally salt and freshly ground pepper to taste. I'm going to need to peel and seed these tomatoes, so I have some water boiling on the stove. To get started, I just want to cut an X in the bottom of each of these tomatoes so that when, they, when it comes time to peeling them, this skin will peel off real easily. As you can see, I've got some water boiling rapidly on the stove. I'm going to lower my tomatoes in there two or three at a time and then boil those for only about a minute. What that'll do is that'll cook the pulp that's right under that skin so that the skin then can separate from the tomato very easily. As you can likely see, while the tomatoes were boiling, the skin split. That's a good indication that the skin is going to peel off very easily. I have in the meantime set up a couple of baking pans that I've lined with parchment paper. 
because I want to roast these tomatoes. I'm heating my oven up to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. That's about 200 degrees centigrade. And then to seed these, I'm going to cut them in half. And rather than squeeze the pulp, squeeze the tomato, I just go right along the white edge there and separate the seeds with the knife and then they just come out a lot easier and I don't have to squeeze these tomatoes and run the risk of breaking up the pulp. So there are my tomatoes ready to go into the oven. I've got space here and this is because I have a method to my madness. Put my garlic again with the skin still on in the center actually going to move these over to the side a little bit and roll this up. In the parchment, push it to the middle, bring up my ends, and then just kind of fold this down. I've got a stapler here. You could use a pin or paper clip. I'm going to staple that. Now I've got a little packet with garlic in it. That's going to go right there. I'll be roasting my garlic along with my tomatoes. And I'm going to be roasting these for probably about an hour. You could drizzle some olive oil over these tomatoes if you wanted to. I'm not going to. I'm going to watch them closely. When it looks like they're drying out well and they look like they're starting to brown pretty well, that's when I'm going to take them out of the oven. I've got a large skillet heating on the stove here. I'm going to pour a I don't know, two or three tablespoons of olive oil in there. And then my onions. After I chopped these onions, I thought, I, this is more than a large, more than a medium onion. This is more like a large onion. I've got my heat on medium high. And as these start to cook down and get translucent and tender, I'll be steadily reducing the heat little by little. I want to caramelize these probably for, saute these probably for 15 minutes. I may even go 20 till they start taking on a nice golden color. It doesn't matter how large or small they're chopped at this point because after these are caramelized, they're going to go with the tomatoes into a food processor to get chopped down further. So after 20 minutes, uh, you can see how nicely browned these onions are. I'm going to let these cool a little bit and then I'm going to use this pan to start pre prepping for my sauce. Meanwhile I have my parsley and my basil to chop. For my filling I have two tablespoons of olive oil. You can use just regular olive oil. This doesn't need to be extra virgin because I'm only going to be using it for frying. Of that remaining onion I have half of that here. So this is one quarter of a large onion and this time I finely chopped it. I have four ounces each, 113 grams of ground beef and ground pork, one tablespoon of chopped fresh parsley, one quarter teaspoon of ground black pepper. I'm just going to basically be grinding some black pepper into it. One half teaspoon each of dried thyme and dried oregano flakes. One clove of garlic if it's kind of large. I have two kind of small ones there. I'll be mincing that up, actually crushing it through a garlic press. I'm going to be using a generous grating of my fresh nutmeg here. About three quarters of a teaspoon of salt, one egg, and then finally one quarter cup, which is about three quarters of an ounce or 21 grams of breadcrumbs. So there's my ground beef and my ground pork. And I want to just cook this meat through. This will cook in about four to five minutes. My meat is thoroughly cooked. That only took about four minutes. So I'm going to crush my garlic and put that in there. Add my oregano and thyme. Grind some black pepper in there. And then finally grate some of my fresh nutmeg in there. Fresh nutmeg is just, I think, so good and I like it, especially with either spinach or beef. OK, 
Okay, and then I'm going to just kind of stir this up and then cook this for only one more minute. I've turned my heat off now under this. I'm just going to add my parsley flakes. Stir that in. The residual heat will cook that parsley as if it really needs it. Then I'm going to let that cool down and I'll be ready to chop that in a food processor. I want to just be able to break that down into a smaller... I don't want to reduce it down to like a paste, like a pate. But since this is going to go into ravioli, I don't want it to be big chunks. I want it to be just cut down fairly small. As I mentioned earlier, because I'm making ravioli, I don't want large chunks of meat in my filling. So I want to chop this up a little bit just to reduce it down somewhat. I don't, as I mentioned, I don't want a, a, like a liver of pate, a smooth meat, but I don't want large chunks either. So let me give that a brief chop. That should be good enough. And then I want to just taste that a little bit for salt. I know it's going to need some salt. So let me just put in maybe half a teaspoon. I said three quarters of a teaspoon. I'm going to start off with half a teaspoon. That'll be fine. I'm going to put my egg in there. Blend that in really well. Get that nicely, get everything nicely coated. That's obviously going to be too wet of a mixture. That's why I have breadcrumbs. Now force the breadcrumbs in there. Get them all over the kitchen. And that's my filling. I'm going to let that sit a little bit while I'm working on my sauce. The breadcrumbs will absorb more of that moisture from the egg and I should end up with a pretty good filling there for my ravioli. I just took my tomatoes out of the oven. They were in there for 60 minutes. I'm seeing a little bit of actual blackening on the edges here, so that's good. That'll give me a nice roasted flavor. I know my tomatoes are ready, so I do have to let these and my garlic cool down a little bit before I put them in the food processor. I'm heating my skillet again. This is the one that I caramelized my onions in. So there's my one cup of beef broth and my anchovy fillets. As this comes to a boil and these anchovy fillets start to cook up a lot, they'll break down. I learned to like cooking with anchovies from watching that BBC cooking series Two Fat Ladies with Clarissa and Jennifer. I wish the BBC <coughs> would send Clarissa here to California to cook with me. We could do our own cooking show, The Brit and the Yank. I'll give her top billing. I wanted you to see the underside, the bottom of these tomatoes, where they browned and even blackened nicely in the roasting pan. That'll give me my nice roasted flavor. In the meantime, remember our garlic? I'm gonna cut that open. And I can smell that. There's our oven roasted garlic. And what I'm gonna do with this is cut the bottom off of this like so and just squeeze this cooked garlic out into my tomatoes and then I can discard that skin. I put my tomatoes and my garlic, my roasted garlic and my caramelized onions in a bowl of my food processor and it's fitted with a chopping blade and then as I like to do, I'm going to put a little plastic barrier over the top here so that the stuff doesn't get onto the lid of my chopping bowl. One less thing to wash. 
Make sure that's locked in place. And then I'm going to just chop these up until they're fairly smooth. I want this fairly smooth. That looks good. I'm seeing bits of onion in there, but that's okay. <laughs> that looks beautiful. So there is my roasted tomato puree. I'm not salting this yet. I'll taste this for salt after I concentrate it. I have in the meantime turned the heat off under that broth because it concentrated down very well. I've returned heat back to this pan. You can see that that liquid now has concentrated down a lot. This is probably like one quarter of the liquid content that I had before. And now here's my tomato puree from the food processor. This sauce is looking fairly thick already. I think this sauce just has to be heated, given a minute or two of cooking with the pepper and the nutmeg in it. I love grating fresh nutmeg into food. I think it just adds, it's like the, the anchovy filet. You can't really taste it so much as it adds a nice complexity to the flavor. Gives it some depth. So right now what I want to do is I want to roll my pasta out. This is fresh pasta that I made earlier. It's had a chance to rest for a while. The resting just makes it easier for it to work with. It just kind of gets into a softer, more pliable state. And I have my pasta machine set up. Don't need my cutters on there since I'm not going to be cutting this pasta. This is just basically rolling sheets for making raviolis. And you're going to get some cracking along the edge and that's fine for this because this is all going to get nicely trimmed. So there's my pasta as it came out of the machine. Again, these edges don't really matter and you'll see why in a moment. I'm going to put a little bit of my filling here. On my pasta. Not a lot. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to work in small pieces here. So you can get some ideas as far as how to shape raviolis. I have on the side here a little bit of egg wash made with egg white. I used to use water, but saw a chef using egg white and I thought, well, why not? I've got egg white in the refrigerator. I had egg white left over from using egg yolks in a recipe. So just want to brush that pretty well. And then put a piece of pasta on top. And then you want to press that down against that egg wash and as you work around it, make sure to squeeze the air out. Now you can if you want. You can just cut these out with a knife. There's a couple of raviolis. And then if you have one of these fluted cutters, you can cut those edges off. And separate it. Two more raviolis. And if you've got one of these little gadgets, they work. You can press that on there and make a little round ravioli. Didn't quite center that the way I should have. Let's try that again. Ah, there it is. That's much nicer. 
and using my larger circle, I'm going to cut a larger round. That one I didn't quite go to the edge. I'll do better on this one. And there we go. And there's a nice larger round. So there's some shapes. I'm going to cook these up, heat my sauce up. Arrange these where you can get a good look at them. I've got some round ones here, some small round ones, some larger round ones, a really plain square cut with a knife, and then these cut with a fluted cutter. So there are my raviolis. And then I heated my sauce up. Put a little bit of sauce over the top. And then I would garnish this maybe around the edge with a little bit of this julienne basil. Not julienne, chiffonade. Maybe garnish the center with some freshly grated Parmesan or Romano cheese. Doesn't that look fantastic? Homemade ravioli. Last step is to see how good these taste. I have been working all day <clears throat> making this pasta, these ravioli, so I am so looking forward to this, seeing how they taste. Mmm, the sauce is good. Nice meaty texture inside. Okay, those are delicious. Excuse me, I gotta go enjoy my homemade ravioli with roast tomato sauce. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit the White Trash Cooking website and look on the home page or in the recipe archive.